I might have this out right here. Like I might have that like that. And I might say, come check me out. I might, I might say like, can you hear this? Can you hear this? Right? And then they'll be like, what are you talking about, Ms. Elgar? Are you crazy? I'll be like, no, look, listen. And right now, like how you are, you're like, what's she going to do? Yeah, I can't wait. Right, are like, you, yeah, gonna yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do this. Something. I'm going to show you. So I'll just, I'll just present it like this because half, Half of the lesson is just experiencing it, right? So then I'll say, listen. And they'll be like, I can hear that now. And I'm like, yeah. And then I'll start, if you could, could you turn this? Yeah. Would you mind? <laughs> Being the DJ over yeah, here. Yeah, you're, you're DJ. Very good. And then I'll just put it down like this. And I'll say, oh, you heard that? That sounds weird. And I'll say, turn it a little faster. <laughs> so you you heard yeah, it yeah and so then wh like what's the first question in your mind like what just happened exactly and so the kids will come in and they'll just say like what was that like yeah. what did we just do and how is that working you didn't have to plug anything in and i heard sound yeah and you know you you talk about engagement yeah they're in the palm of my hands yeah but so one of the concepts that's really hard uh, for kids to know is, you know, I'm teaching elementary school music. And, you know, if you're a, a lesson phase instructor, you're going to be teaching some, you know, one-on-one -on -one lessons. Um, I think this could apply because you're not only teaching them about music, but you're, you also want to teach them to understand how music works. Because I think once a child understands um, more about music, they can perform it a lot better. Um, so this is what, um, if you could just hold on to that. Sure. This is what I do to demonstrate about, you know, sound waves and if you want us to move, are we good? Okay. So um, the first thing I talk about is sound waves will travel through the air in this kind of manner. I'm going to release the energy in a second and you'll see it bounce back and forth. And if I was further away, you know, it would take a lot more time and be slower. Mm -hmm. But then I talk about what a sound wave actually looks like. And so I'm going to stand up here for a second, and we're going to actually create just one really long wave. And you can see. And now where our hands are, this is, this is what I would do in class. Where our hands are called nodes, all right? And so if I go twice as fast, I'm going to increase the frequency. I'm getting nerdy in here because I love science, but uh, if I, I'm going to go twice as fast, and you should see right here, there's going to be another node. Well, let me try again. It might have been, <laughs> might have been me. <laughs> we got one. We got one. Hold on. There we go. We got two. So you can see two sound waves here. So the frequency is getting up, and then I would say, you know, do you think this is a high note? Or yep. a low note, and we say we make the correlation between the sound waves. And if we're really good, we can get three going. Oh, we have it. <laughs> we have got three. I've gotten four and five with the kids, and they just go, "Wow, that's so cool!" But now they're understanding. Okay, higher frequency is more wave. So I brought a drum, and we didn't have any pepper, so we actually put some dirt in here. Um, so this, uh, I use this to demonstrate the concept of resonance um, because it's very difficult for a student to understand um, something that's invisible um, and so I have a frequency generator on my phone and I'll pull it up here and I'm gonna hook it up to the speaker and we're gonna see if we can get some visuals here You can put a tangerine on there, too, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see what we get out of this. So the first thing I point out to the kids is when I strike the drum, you can see where I strike it based off of where everything's moving. So the, the goal of this, it works really well with pepper or something light. This, this dirt's a little bit heavy, but um, the goal of this is for the students to see how sound can go from the speaker and actually make the drum vibrate. Um, and so what I'll do first is I'll show the kids that 
if it's at a low frequency, you can see them jumping around on there. And so then I'll start to raise it. And then I'll eventually get to a note. I'm going to stop it for a second. I'll get to a note where it doesn't move. The bigger pieces are moving, but most of it is staying still. And they'll say, like, how, why? And I'll say, because it's not the right frequency. So then I'll move it up to where it is the right frequency. Somewhere around here. And you can start to see shapes being formed. And you could, you could see a circle right here, and there's some... Uh, nodes over here, and these were, I'll make a uh, correlation to, this is exactly what was happening with the slinky, um, and if I go up higher, it might hurt our ears in here, but uh, should, I, should I go up? Oh, okay. All right, so <laughs> hopefully your ears are okay. So I'm going to go up uh, about an octave here, let's see. Notice it stopped again. You can see clearly more. Another, another circle is forming here. And if we go up even higher, what do you think might happen? More circles. Yeah, but we're not going to make ourselves go <coughs> deaf over here. But yeah, exactly. And so this is just a great way to show uh, visually resonance because this isn't touching the drum at all. It's actually just sending the sound waves up. And it just so happens to be the same note. So they kind of make each other go so it's 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 really it's really a cool exper yeah. experiment i usually do it with my voice but it's it's not um loud enough with the heavy the heavier uh, material in it